You may have seen in episode 78 that we got our anchor well and truly stuck. We're just about to leave the anchorage, but uh, got the anchor pretty stuck. We're in 15 meters of water, which isn't good. Well, we promised to take video on ways of getting it unstuck, so here it is. There are many things that could be lurking on the seabed waiting to ensnare your anchor. It could be something like a power or communications cable. These are usually marked on the charts or maybe on the shore. Avoid them like the plague. If I'm in an industrial harbour or somewhere designated as a foul anchorage there, they're marked on charts or just local knowledge is, is usually good. I would use one of these. Uh, it's a, a trip buoy so that attaches to the to the front of the anchor and you, it'll help you uh, to, to get it out if it does get stuck. Uh, but these are a bit of a faff to put on, they can get tangled up in your chain and if you're using them in just a, a normal popular anchorage you uh, you risk someone coming along and lifting it thinking it's a mooring buoy. Don't laugh, doesn't matter what you write on it, it does happen. For the more normal cruisers anchorage, old mooring blocks and rocky outcrops are probably the biggest hazard. So if you turn up in the dark as we did, or it's too deep and murky to see the bottom, also the case here, dropping your anchor is a lottery. For us, we snagged a rock. I knew which direction we'd set the anchor in, so first thing is to pull it the other way. So we're gonna try and maneuver the boat round a little bit so we're pulling it from the other direction. Keep going back. Give it a hard kick. With a keel hung rudder, we can kick the stern by putting the rudder hard over and giving the engine a good blast. Keep going backwards, just slowly backwards and we'll pull it from the other direction. We're coming near to over the top of it now. That's good, just slowly, just slowly. Don't wrench it. Once we're 180 degrees from where we set it, we go slowly astern. Okay, that's good. There's a lot of force at play here, especially with a heavy boat like ours. So don't be tempted to try and bulldoze your way out, you'll break something. Once you're in position, tighten the chain with the windlass and slowly pull backwards. Okay, I think that's, that might be free, that might be free. So just stop us there and I'll, uh, I'll start bringing it up. Just forward slightly. I did feel movement, but the skipping tells me it's probably not released. It appears to be stuck. So because pulling the anchor from above isn't working, we are overrunning it and pulling in the other direction. There's still some pivoting component, but we know this isn't really working. But now there's a large component backwards. Sadly, on this occasion, not large enough. It's not releasing. We do try a few more angles, but it's clearly not budging. May as well release the chain. Now, regular viewers will know we do have a secret weapon, the sub. So let's put it down there and see if we can see what's going on. How's it going? <laughs> well, it's actually very difficult to follow the chain all the way down. See how I dive there, I can see it at the moment. You try and follow it down, but then it just gets really quite dark. It is very easy to get disorientated in the low visibility. I could get down to the bottom with the sub, it can go down to about 30 meters. So I can see what's down there when I get close, but actually finding the anchor, well, that was very difficult. An obvious technique would be to follow the chain down. This too though is quite tricky. You tend to overrun the chain. You don't really want to turn around and then risk wrapping the cable around it and getting that stuck down there as well. It was a good idea, but on this occasion, didn't quite work. All right, we're gonna put the, the ring down across it. So what happens with this, is that this slides all the way down the chain. So you un unclip that, put it across the chain it slide down all the way and then hopefully we get it oh we have to drive the boat over the top get it get this to go over the shank and then get over the top of it and we pull it and we're pulling the other end of the anchor then we're pulling the just the, the anchor out backwards so we can try it from the boat I mean it is possible to do it from a dinghy as well and try and pull it but I think the way that's stuck we'll probably have to do it with the boat and drive the boat forward and have the chain a little bit slack and have this tight and then this should pull it in the other direction and hopefully get it out. So how does that work? Well, with the chain tight enough to be off the seabed, we lower the ultra ring and slowly move the boat forward to drag it up the shank. 
Then, with the chain slackened, we try to get a bit of an angle on the road that's attached to the ultra ring and pull. Here's how it looks in practice. Okay, you can hear that ring to me then? Yep. <laughs> it is quite heavy. <laughs> I guess that's how it does the trick. Yeah. Well, I'm going to run this through the, the roller that Snubber normally goes on. So it'll be held on the bow sprit. And then clip it onto the chain. So this is where I normally put the Snubber. And it'll go through and get tied off. So now, what I need to do is clip this on, slide it through, and it's clipped on, and we can slide it down. Pop that back in, and that's it. Pop it down now, I'll come back round and we'll start the engine and do it. Can you just tie it off? Okay, on the, uh... sure. A little bit of chain out. Slacken the chain and get the boat in position. Just a blast. I know, I've just got to get this friend. Okay, no. Worries. Then tie off the road to the ultra ring and we're ready. A pull from here should be much more effective. So a little jig then <clears throat> might have actually freed something. Fingers crossed. Seems to be coming. Let's just hope we get to the 15 metre mark. Damn it! <laughs> so there you can see what's happened. You get the ring, the ring over the top, and pull it, and that's what's. Helped us through it, so that's excellent. Got enough room to drift here for a bit. We've just got a, a boat, a fishing boat out there. I'm just going to get the dinghy around and free us up with the ring. Okay, so just come up and lift it off. That's it. Lovely. Plan D would have been to dive on the anchor. I do have a small two litre tank, but I don't really like going beyond 10 metres with it. I might have had a go at this and uh, use the chain to, to make my ascent nice and, and slowly, because that's the thing. But don't take that sort of thing lightly. It's uh, quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, going down that sort of depth. And uh, I might have had a look, but I think the time taken to actually get it out, I would have had to get a proper dive team in to do it. But luckily it wasn't necessary because the ultra ring did save the day. So it's definitely earned its place on board. Um, I do use it for other things. I use it as a, as a dumbbell, so it's quite good for, uh, for exercise. Um, and it's also, probably its main use is, is a kellet. I don't often use a kellet. I know some people do, um, but I have used it before in that mode. We used it in Venice here. It looks like there's lots of water, but from overhead, you can just about make out the reality, which is as well as the mud close to shore, the whole of the middle section is also a mud bank leaving a tiny slither to anchor in. Enough room to come up and set the anchor, but it's the swinging room that's the problem. So the reason for the kellet is to weight the chain and to limit the swinging circle we have and hopefully keep us off the mud banks. The ultra ring works by passing the gap through the chain, clipping it closed and then sliding it down to the right level. In this anchorage, laying enough scope might have us on the mud bank. I've marked the area here that's got the two meter depth that we require and you can see there's not enough swinging room for the scope. But using the kellet means it shortens that swinging circle. This is a good quick option, easier than using two anchors if the wind's not going to get up. And it did the job really well, just going down the chain, and it just shortens your swing then and uh, makes it that you can anchor in places where you wouldn't normally be able to do so. So I hope that's been of some use. And just before we go, I just want to address a question that came up when we put this out uh, in the episodes. And that was about the Ultra Anchor itself. Because the, the Ultra is actually really good at digging down deep and getting itself you know, hard in the substrate, 
Is it a problem to get it out just in normal, say, thick clay? Because some anchors really can be a problem like that. Well, actually, no. Um, the, the Ultra is very good at extracting itself from things like that. If you get over the top of it, it's got a curved bottom, you'll see if you look at it closely. So it's able to pivot and actually just pull itself out really quite nicely. So it's not something you have to, to worry about at all. So thanks for watching. See you next time.